It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. In sports, the scoreboard doesn't tell the full story, but Netflix does. Stories about dads who happen to be world-class quarterbacks and a battle for the heart, soul, and direction of the multi-billion dollar business of F1. Whether you're a diehard fan or you're brand new, Netflix has the stories for every type of fan. You can watch these incredible sports stories like Quarterback, F1 Drive to Survive, Untold, and many more now on Netflix. The NHL newsreel continues to be dominated by Canadian teams. So we're taking a look north of the border at the Edmonton Oilers, Ottawa Senators, and Toronto Maple Leafs. All for varying reasons. All for the impact on your fantasy hockey squad. Thank you for joining us for the Wednesday episode of the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. Let's get this paper. Your Locked On Fantasy Hockey. Your daily podcast on fantasy hockey. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back inside the lab, everyone, to your source for fantasy hockey news and the daily degenerate gambling breakdowns. It's the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. Thank you for making us your first listen. Every single day. Today's episode is brought to you by Sleeper. Download the Sleeper app and use promo code LOCKEDONNHL to get up to a 100 bucks match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. My friends, hockey fans around the world, thank you for tuning in. Riding solo today, missing my boy Steel. But there is a lot of things to talk about in the NHL world, specifically related to Canadian teams. The biggest news coming out of Edmonton, Jack Campbell being demoted to the AHL. What does this mean for the fantasy value of Stuart Skinner? And perhaps one of the goalies that they're going to be recalling from the AHL will look at those two names for the Edmonton Oilers. Ottawa Senators also on a slide. Not nearly as bad, I would say, as the Edmonton Oilers situation, but some of these comments, the ice, getting booed off the ice, the Ottawa Senators the other night, calls for the coach's head, Kachuk's comments, Giroux making comments. I want to talk about that. And very quickly, Matt Nyes and the Toronto Maple Leafs had a very nice come-from-behind victory against the Tampa Bay Lightning the other night. Matt Nyes immediately becomes fantasy-relevant, playing with Mitch Marner and Austin Matthews. Austin Matthews makes some comments in the media about the fans in Toronto as well, a little bit more lighthearted and in a better tone than Kachuk and Giroux, but we want want to talk about that as well because the fan base in Toronto does deserve some criticism, actually a lot. That's a quiet barn in Toronto to play in, but anyhow, big time bets, of course, on today's episode. I'm going to wrap up the three-game board on tap for tonight. But let's start with this Edmonton Oilers squad. We've talked about it. Everyone knows what's going on with the Edmonton Oilers, but how about this take? Connor McDavid needs to be better before I even get to the goalies, before I even talk about what's clearly been their biggest issue. Let's not even get it twisted. Jack Campbell and Stuart Skinner have been atrocious. And maybe a lot more to be blamed here is not just on the goalies, but the overall setup of this squad right now, classic Edmonton fashion. This is what's been the Achilles heel for this team for seemingly since forever just not being able to get it done. But two goals in nine games for Connor McDavid, for me, is just not nearly enough. And 26 shots, when at this time last year, something tells me he probably had double that, at least. He's got to be better. And as much as, yeah, of course, this is on Jack Campbell and Stuart Skinner in a very big way. This is on Connor McDavid as well. He needs to be better. And this team overall needs to be better. They send Jack Campbell down. They finally do it. Two, eight, and one. They're sitting in seventh in the Pacific. Something had to be shaken up here. What's interesting, though, and it's you dig into these numbers a little bit, they've been bad, and the numbers back up how bad they've been. A collective 860 save percentage. That is, at all strengths, that's the NHL's worst this season. That's worse than the San Jose Sharks. Oh, my goodness, my friends. That is just straight up and down bad. By the way, if... The two goalies that we're looking at in the AHL that they could be calling up, by the way, sidebar just very quickly, Olivier Rodrigue and Calvin Pickard. Calvin Pickard was a name that bounced around NHL and fantasy circles for a couple of years as one of those under-the-radar, up-and-coming names, and he does have NHL experience. But 
if he does replace Jack Campbell on the roster, they also save themselves about $375,000 in cap space. Uh, let me just check this. You know me with the numbers. This is why I really miss steal. $378,000 per Puckpedia. If Picker does end up being the goalie they call up and replaces Campbell on the roster. I think Calvin Pickard is probably the move that they're going to go to. So number one, we have to have a look at Calvin Pickard if he indeed does get called up because he might have to be that guy who gives Jack Campbell some time to work on his game in the AHL and maybe take the lion's share of the games. Look, Spit and Chicklets podcast, I believe it was Wit, had the point about giving Stuart Skinner the opportunity to hone his game. This is a second-year player in the NHL. He was up for the Calder last year, a finalist. We need to give this player his time to adjust to the NHL level. And I think maybe in the veteran in Pickard, and I'm going to bring this up here because I think he has like something like 111 games of NHL experience, something like that. Anyway, 116 games of NHL experience, plus 2-2-0 this year in the AHL with a 9.39 save percentage for Bakersfield. Maybe he can come in and take the lion's share of the games for now, make some saves, something that this team is badly needed. I think a lot of this, of course, yeah, the team needs to perform better, allowing 4.27 goals per game, second worst in the NHL, only behind the San Jose Sharks. Of course, they need to be better overall. But it's a confidence thing. Clearly, they bring in Connor Brown. He's doing absolutely nothing. Leon Dreisaitl's obviously been leading this team offensively, but he could even take it up a notch. Evan Bouchard's been there offensively, but defensively leaving so much to be desired. Matthias Ekholm has been up and down as well, although he probably has been openly critical about this being the hardest start to his career. He's had some harsh comments. Very interesting, actually, another complete sidebar, how openly and honestly harsh some of these players are being for different reasons and on different topics in the media over this past week. And I'll continue to talk about some of those comments coming up after the break. Brady Kachuk in Ottawa, getting at the fans, defending his coach. Austin Matthews carrying his team and also giving a little jab at the Toronto faithful coming up with the big time bets for Wednesday's board at the end of the episode. But I got to just wrap it up here on this Oilers situation. The Pacific division is exactly the strongest in the NHL. You know, maybe it's a little bit better than the central, but man, is it still open? But at the end of the day, the where they're sitting right now, let me just bring this up two eight and one and seventh in the Pacific. At some point, they're going to start running out of time in a hurry here of making up games. And when I look at the standings overall, that is something that honestly, sooner than later, if they don't figure it out, it's going to be a real issue for this team. Right now, five points. So let's say you're looking at the Anaheim Ducks in the fourth spot. Right now, you are nine points back already. Yeah, it's Anaheim and yeah, it's still early. But this is going to catch up to this Edmonton team very quickly. And I wanted to just leave it at this. Connor McDavid is a loyal new market boy. He is only going to put up with so much losing for so long. It's just going to be a straight up fact. If this team can continue, continues to squander his prime, a guy this good, I'm sorry, he's not going to stick around long. I don't know where he's going to go. I don't know how that shakes out. I don't know if and when that even happens, of course. But you can't help but feel this is just a really, really awful situation in Edmonton. And at the end of the day, yeah, I'm taking a look at Calvin Pickard if he comes up. Jack Campbell is a must drop right now for sure. Of course, he probably already was a couple of weeks ago. That's obvious. I'm not fully ready to give up on Stuart Skinner just yet because he has, in his small sample size, put up strong numbers. 37, 24, and 6 in his career. 908 save percentage. He is only 25 years old, and he only has 70 games of NHL regular season experience under his belt a.k.a. not ready to give up on the kid yet. I'm getting close to being ready to give up on this NHL squad called the Edmonton Oilers that's looking more of like an AHL squad these days. Last point, what's interesting is the odds up on FanDuel. Shout out to FanDuel Sportsbook, by the way. The Edmonton Oilers still have the eighth shortest odds to win the Cup. They have better odds than the New York Rangers. I don't understand. And the Tampa Bay Lightning, they're more favored than those squads. So clearly Vegas isn't ready to totally sell and sell ship on this squad either, which might be a little bit of a time to sprinkle a couple of bucks on the Oilers. Hey, you know me, I like to get a little crazy with the bets, people. But let's not get crazy with the takes because right after the break, I got a lot more to talk about, of course. But today's episode 
is brought to you by, among others, today's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What bring home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers to roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because with ebay motors you're burning rubber baby not cash and with all the parts you need at the prices you want it's easy to turn your car into the mvp and bring home that win keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com eligible items only exclusions of course apply today's episode is also brought to you by sleeper Make sure you're checking out the Sleeper app. A new NHL season brings all sorts of possibilities. A player on your favorite team could pop 50 goals. Your favorite team could hoist that Lord Stanley's mug and you could win a big party payday by playing Daily Fantasy on Sleeper. The official Daily Fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network, Sleeper is our favorite. Number one choice for Daily Fantasy sports, but of course, Daily Fantasy hockey because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contests. You can play NFL 2, NBA, MLB, CFB, all on Sleeper. Steele and I are loving the group chat, team chat functionality in the app. You can connect with all other Sleeper users. To win a $100 bet on Sleeper, you need to correctly predict the outcome of eight-player stats. You heard me. All 100 times your money playing daily fantasy with Sleeper. Use promo code locked on NHL and you'll get a hundred bucks match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code locked on NHL. See Sleeper's tombs of use for details. Locations apply. My friends, Wednesday episode. Lots happening around the NHL. This is when fantasy GMs who don't slip or slack on their teams can really start to get a leg up because there's almost that postseason lull one month in. If things haven't started to go super great for your squads, maybe you're not paying as much attention. I've been a victim to this. Stay focused. Stay tapped into the pod. Do your research. Try and watch as much hockey as you possibly can. Highlights help. Do the uh, the recaps on YouTube on the NHL channel is a really good source to get your news in early. You know, while you're firing off those morning emails, maybe pull that up in the background alongside your boys on the Lockdown Fantasy Hockey Podcast. By the way, thank you for making us your first listen. We are a part of the Lockdown Network where you can check out NHL, NFL, CFB, all the coverage you need, your team every single day. Shout out to Lockdown, but shout out to what's happening with some of these Canadian squads. That's what we're going to continue to look at. Ottawa Senators. Look, I'm a Toronto Maple Leafs fan. I want to see all Canadian teams succeed to a certain degree. Although the Ottawa situation is really starting to get out of hand from an off-ice perspective. When you look at it compared to the Edmonton Oilers situation, I actually don't think there are too many parallels aside from both teams being not where they want in the standings. The Ottawa Senators, to me, have a lot more going for them in the immediate future. Will you want to say that the Edmonton Oilers overall still have more expectations and should be the better team at the end of the season? Sure. But I think right now, you know, the Ottawa Senators are only six points, six points removed from third place, seven removed from second. I understand lately they have not been playing well. Four and six in their last 10 games. They sit at the bottom of the Atlantic division. The the comments from Kachuk, the calls for DJ Smith's head, the head coach in Ottawa, they're being booed off the ice. I actually understand it, and I don't know if I'm fully here for the take that Brady Kachuk comes in. And, you know, he defends Smith. I get that. But let me hit you with this quote. The constant booing and nonsense from the crowd tonight I understand they're a passionate fan base. I understand it. I love it. But when you face adversity, you don't turn your back on the guys out there. We're playing hard. I know it's frustrating, but it's not like we're giving up out there. Look, this is Canada, Brady. They are going to get on your case, and there's an easy way to make sure that they don't boo you. Win games. And right now, this Ottawa Senators team, look, they're dealing with a, a bad hand to start this year. All of the off-ice issues with Shane Pinto, the injuries, the coach, 
getting calls for the coach, Pierre Dorian, the dad and of, they're going to lose that first round pick for that debacle. Thomas Shabbat out, Kastelik out, Brandstrom out, Anton Zub's coming back, Ridley Gregg is still out, obviously Shane Pinto out. Their center depth has been challenged. The blue line depth has been challenged. And look, we've been saying this for months. The Atlantic division is much improved. Detroit is much better. The Sabres are full of offensive killers. Toronto is having its struggles, sure, but they still obviously can get it done. Big win from them against the Tampa Bay Lightning the other night. I'm going to get to that in a hot minute. But the Ottawa Senators need to figure it out in a hurry, much for the same reasoning that I was just explaining in Ottawa. Leapfrogging teams in the middle of the season is not a situation you want to be in. Can it happen? Mathematically? Of course. And it's still early. I'll say it again. But that is not a situation you want to be in to get fantasy value, number one. You want to be t- being careful of your fantasy investment in some of these teams that are off to, t- off to bad starts. That's number one and obvious. But number two, just from an overall standpoint in the NHL standings, that's not how you play this game to get into the playoffs, obviously. Claude Giroux also coming out the next day saying basically the similar thing, defending their coach. I get that, and I respect it. But going at the fans for booing you off the ice, I get it. It's a rough ride, and I understand. They're 4-5. and five, They're hovering around 500. But the nature in which they had lost a number of games, let me just bring that up in a sec, because I get it. So one win in their last six games, and that was against Pittsburgh. Losses to Tampa and L.A., that's tough. Getting blown out by Buffalo, tough. Lost to Detroit at 5-2, that's ugly. And then they start the game, the season on a three-game win streak aside from I think they opened the season with a loss against Carolina. Anyway, they've been up and down. They need to be a lot better. I think we haven't even seen this whole team complete yet. That's one of the things that I have on my mind here. I don't think we've really seen the best of the Ottawa Senators, obviously in terms of on-ice product, but just in terms of getting their full roster and what the lineup they think and have predicted from the start of the season out there. So I'm not ready to fully bail on the Josh Norris's of the world. Obviously, Timmy Stutz, Brady Kachuk, these are all elite pieces that aren't going anywhere from your fantasy lineups. But I got my eyes peeled on this situation because I think some of those peripheral pieces, Ridley Gregg, Matthew Joseph, when they do start to have a come up, the overall team, some of those peripheral pieces fantasy-wise are going to once again become valuable. Maybe Jornis Koprasalo goes on some kind of heater. He's been so-so. I don't know what's really going to happen because I just think that the rest of the teams in the Atlantic division, and I know, again, it's been kind of up and down for a number of squads, Toronto and Tampa as well. Yeah, they're up there at the top, near the top, but they've had their struggles too. Boston Bruins, 10-1-1 one one are really starting to cheese me. But we're not going there. Let me talk about my boys in blue for a hot minute before I wrap up the show with Big Time Bets. From a fantasy perspective, just number one, Matt Nyes is playing with Mitch Marner. And Austin Matthews, full stop right there. He immediately becomes fantasy relevant. This team is being carried by number 34 right now. And the offense runs through 34 and 16. So if Matthew Nyes is getting the run out right now with those two guys, you need an offensive bump. You got to be going out there right now. Also, only owned at 26% on Yahoo and 40% on ESPN. So he's probably out there. Go out there and grab yourself a piece of Matty Nyes because if you take a little dig into his numbers, bit of a slow start to the year. He looked really good last year in the playoffs, fitting right in in the top six. He's got good hands. He's got a nose for the net and great puck sense. Those are all things to make an NHL winner a a winger, a very productive one, especially when you get to play with the likes of the two guys that I just mentioned. How about eight penalty minutes? How about 18 uh, 18 hits? Four block shots, three goals, and four assists. The ice time is on the rise. You got to go out there and grab yourself a little piece of Matty Nyes while he's still out there. And let me just touch on number 34 himself. Go off, kid. I want to see more from Austin Matthews because I really do think he can continue to do it. He changes the game with his shot. He changes the game with his clutch ability to score. I know. I understand the holes in this game, in his game. His inability, quote unquote, to perform in the clutch in the playoffs, which is interesting because when you look at his NHL playoff numbers, he has 44 points in 50 games. So I understand that he needs to be more of a big time player in the postseason. But so far, his NHL regular season career is Hall of Fame caliber. And this season, 13 goals in 12 games. It's just impressive. He's leading the leading the NHL in goals. 
And he he's carrying this team right now. He brings them all the way back from a 4-1 deficit against the Tampa Bay Lightning the other night. And he fires up the crowd. I love it was a well-pointed, calculated comment about waking up that crowd at Scotiabank Arena. I'm a Toronto boy. I've watched a lot of hockey in that barn, and it is a mausoleum at times. It is absolutely no atmosphere. I'm calling out the whole Toronto fan base, but we know this. This is a bad barn to play in from the home team's perspective, and he is the guy to be able to call them out. I'm calling you out too, Toronto fans. I want you to make some noise in there, especially when number 34 is doing special heart trophy-like things. And with Connor McDavid slipping, talking about bets coming up around the break, might be worth taking a little look at Poppy for that heart trophy if he keeps popping hat tricks and keeps carrying this team. It's going to be a serious run to the end for that heart trophy. But, you know, I got to also take a look at our friends from FanDuel Sportsbook because today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel FanDuel Sportsbook. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line wager. That's $150 bucks. if your team wins. You've been thinking about joining FanDuel. You need to be joining now. There's no better time to get in on the action, and the app is amazing. So easy to use. Wide range of betting options, including spreads, props, over-unders, and more. Steele and I have been loving the same game parlays. Great odds on everything you want to wager on. So head over to FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. This is David Harrison of the Locked On Commanders podcast to draw your attention to the taste that's going down in the bread aisle. All thanks to Dave's Killer Bread, Bread Amplified. Anyone can bake bread, few can rock it. And Dave's Killer Bread is the champion of killer taste, killer texture, and is for those who want to rise above the boring. Organic and healthy doesn't have to mean boring when it's made with the highest quality organic and non-GMO ingredients packed with whole grains, fiber, and protein. 21 Whole Grains and Seeds Bread has a subtle sweetness and a seed-coated crust, while good seed products are the boldest and sweetest of all. Dave's Killer Bread was built on the belief that second chances can change lives because after spending 15 years in prison, not only did the guy with the guitar you see on every loaf turn his own life around, He's helping others to do the same by hiring the best people for the job, regardless of their background. He's ensuring your mornings no longer taste like cardboard. Your taste buds don't have to feel sedated and your sandwiches can become superstars. Visit daveskillerbread.com to learn more and look for Dave's Killer Bread in the bread aisle of your favorite grocery store. Here we go, guys. Big time bets. I hope you've been feeling the episode. Shout out to all of our everydayers, our listeners, supporters of the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. Thank you for making us your first listen every single day. Make sure you're checking us out everywhere you find your favorite and hottest content. Smash that subscribe button on YouTube and make sure you please drop us a five-star review and comments. Man, I love talking to you guys. I love hearing the questions. You guys are in my DMs on Instagram. You're on my DMs on Twitter. Shout out to you guys for all of that support. I hope we've been helping you a little bit get the leg up with your fantasy squads and i hope i can help you get the leg up with a little bit of this money so let's take a look at it three game board not a whole lot going on on wednesday night but these are some of the situations look i sometimes straight up wish i could have blinders on and take a look at only a couple of games i see 12 13 14 those super tuesdays 15 16 games and i can get a little overwhelmed kid in a candy store kind of thing if you know what i'm saying but three games on the nhl board tonight and I'm going to take a look at this Toronto Maple Leafs one first. This is going to be a big game for the Ottawa Senators. And I'm actually really excited to see what they're going to be able to do in a response to clearly being called out by their fans. But again, the Toronto Maple Leafs are coming off a major victory of themselves. So this is going to be, from what I can expect, is basically going to be playoff like hockey. You got the Maple Leafs on a big comeback, feeling themselves coming back against that Tampa team to 4-1 down. Ottawa, obviously, coming into a big rivalry game with their provincial rivals. Already going to be fired up, but with even more on the line. That preamble is done. I got to be riding with the Leafs on the money line here, minus 160. Because aside from this season's track record and where these two teams are quote-unquote headed, I know the Leafs have been up and down as well, but right now I like the direction where the team is pointed. Joseph Wall is going to be taking that number one spot for now. Thank you very much. Ottawa are one in six in their last games against Toronto, and they're a bad road team lately. One and eight in their last nine games on the road. Obviously, that trickles into last year, and they only have one win in their last seven trips to Toronto. 
that right there, boom, Leafs money line minus 160. That's my first bet. I think it's going to be a close game. If I were to really chicken out, I maybe take Ottawa on the puck line plus one and a half because I think it's going to be that kind of one goal type game. But I was also going to lean to the under. I think both teams really need this one. Clearly, Ottawa, I think they're going to be a much improved team. Zub is back on the blue line. That's going to help them as well. So I would lean to the under there. But going with the Leafs money line, that's my first bet. Second bet. And actually, no, second bet. Kings at Knights. I'm really liking this spot for the total. Vegas Golden Knights have really impressed. My goodness, they are looking like the Stanley Cup, reigning Stanley Cup champs and for a reason. A lot of high-scoring games from the Vegas Golden Knights overall, but the offense is feeling it. The LA Kings are one of the top offensive units in the league and also feeling it on a three-game Canadian team heater. They're back down south in the U.S., I think this is going to be a really good spot for an over. The total has gone over the number in 11 of LA's last 14 games. And the total has gone over the number in the last nine, nine straight games for LA against their Western Conference opponents. I'm loving this spot, but also how about this? 10 of the last 12 between these two teams overall. High scoring over the number. Give me over six and a half at a minus 110 odd in this LA Kings Vegas game. I expect a lot of goals. Panthers at Caps. That's the third game. I'm going to my lock of the night and keeping this one very short and sweet and simple. I'm going to be betting against this Washington Capitals club all season long. And I've been very clear about why. Florida Panthers also 8-2-0 and oh in their last 10 against the Washington Capitals, including six straight wins. However, the Florida Panthers aren't exactly the greatest road team, so I'm a little bit nervous about that angle. They come off a win against Columbus 5-4 the other night, but the uh, the Washington Capitals, I understand, 4-1 and one in their last five. San Jose they beat in one of those games. Columbus is one of those teams they beat. Not fully buying into that overall record there. Loving this spot for Florida. Loving the recent trends. That's my lock of the night. Panthers on the money line, minus 140. Have a look at all three of those. That might actually be a really nice little three-game parlay there. Put those three together. Hope you've been feeling those bets, my friends. I hope you've been feeling today's episode, Wednesday's episode. Thank you for joining me for the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. Make sure you continue to check us out Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. in the morning on YouTube and across all platforms you find your favorite and hottest content. Make sure you check out the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day, NFL, MLB, NBA, and of course, the NCAA. We'll be back Thursday. Thank you so, so much for joining us. JamesAllen.com is the online destination to easily design a customized engagement ring and save up to 50% compared to traditional stores. You pick a diamond, whether it's lab-created or earth-created, James Allen has over 200,000 conflict-free stones. Then, you pick your ring setting and metal. And if you need some help, they have real-time diamond consultations available, where an expert can walk you through it all. Get 25% off your order at jamesallen.com, code LOCKEDON. That's jamesallen.com, code LOCKEDON.